So let's get started with the DS11. I printed mine off. Yours might look a little different if you picked it up at the acceptance facility, but let's get started. And if you need help with the rest of the application for your passport, make sure you check out my other video that I'll link up in the cards at the end of this video and down in the description box that will help you get your passport as quick as possible. So are you applying for a passport book? passport card or both. Now this is going to change how much it costs and it also can change where you are able to go depending on what you get. I have another video about what is a passport book versus a passport card. You can check that out in the cards here or also down in the description box if you're unsure. Let's just say that we're going to go with the passport book. We'll put a black X into the box like that and make sure you are just using a black pen. They're not going to accept any other color and no pencil or anything like that. They will just get rid of your application if you don't use a black pen. So here it's asking for if you want the regular book or the large book. It doesn't cost you any more money for the large book and you get like twice the pages. So let's just go with the large book. Why not? Now when filling out right here, we're just going to put one letter per each individual box. You can see my printer didn't do a great job of doing the boxes. It probably doesn't show up well on camera. So I'll just do it like this. Big D, big O, big E for last name Doe. Now we're not going to touch anything over here. That's not for us. We're going to continue down here to the first names. Big J for John. And here we go. All big letters like that. Middle name we'll say is Joe. J-O-E. So John, Joe, Doe. All big letters like that. Date of birth is going to be in the month, month, date, date, year, year, year format. So we'll say April 2nd, and then let's say we're in 2004. Okay, so it'll look like that with four years. And then here we have something that's new for this year's application, and that is the gender that you want to go with. It will be uh, male, female, or this X one right here. And this means that you could be um, you know, non-identifying or something like that. Uh, just be aware that they do indicate that there may be some countries that if you indicate an X as your gender, that uh, they might not recognize that in another country. So whatever you want to choose, let's say you identify as female, you put an X in the box like that. You can also see, are you changing your gender marker from a previous passport? Then if you are saying yes, then yes, here you go. And if not, you would just leave it blank and you would move on to your place of birth. Cityville, comma, Michigan. And you can do it like that. Social security number, one number per each individual box. Um, for your email, you can just obviously place it in there, whatever your email is. Okay, now going down here, you have to have the 10 digits for your primary contact number. So it might be 999555 etc. Okay, coming down to the mailing address. Again, here you just need your street and you need your PO box if you have one, something like that. So this will be your street address. So let's say you live at 123 Main, but down here you might include the, impart the apartment or the suite or something you live in. So maybe I live in apartment 6, something like that. Say we're still living in Cityville this pretend place that I made up that I'm sure is not a real town. And that's going to be in the state of Michigan. Uh, the postal zip code, hopefully no place actually has that zip code. <laughs> and the country, and this is only outside the United States, you're just going to want to leave this blank if you are within the United States. So any other aliases that you've had, if you had a different birth name, if you had a maiden name, if you had a previous marriage or a legal name change, you're going to have to list those here. And if you need additional pages, you can just attach those. Now this down here, we're not going to touch. We're not going to fill this out. This is going to be done by the agent at the uh, acceptance facility. But this right here is going to require a picture. Again, you can go to my other video that will tell you how to do that picture exactly. So make sure we're being careful with our directions here. We have the name of the applicant. We're going to do last name, first name, middle name. So here it would be totally fine to do Doe, John, Joe. No problem like that. Same thing with the birth date. What did we say? It was the fourth, the second, I forget the year. 2004 maybe, your slashes in there like that. See how they did it? Slashes, slashes, okay? Do the same thing that they're doing, okay? Parental information, same thing, just first and middle name here at their birth. So what were your parents' first name and middle name at their birth? So maybe your, uh, and, and it says here, mother, father, parent. So you can decide, is it going to be your father? Is it up here, is it going to be your mother down here? Make sure you're not like circling it or anything like I am. I'm just trying to help you with that. Just uh, decide which one. Do you want your father here? Do you want your mother here? Or did you have two moms maybe? And you could put one here and one here. 
uh, that's up to you. You don't have to like circle it like that, like I did. Okay, but make sure you put their last name again at their birth. That's very important. At their birth, what was their maiden name? What was their original name? Not their name now, so make sure you get that right. Uh, what is their date of birth here too? Their date of birth is going to be in the same format that you did up here, so with those backslashes like that. Uh, the place of birth, you need the city. You need the state if it's in the US. So if it's in the US, you need the city in the state or the city and country as it's presently known if it's not. Okay, so their genders, uh, again, we have the X option or it could be male or female. And if they are a US citizen, again, just check those boxes with an X like that. And that is going to go for both of those parents there. Okay, now if you only have one parent, just leave the other one blank. Okay, they're going to ask you if you've ever been married. If you have, it's going to be a small black X like that. And then you're going to move on to complete the remaining items in number 11. So that is going to be right here, the full name of your current spouse or most recent spouse. So say you've been divorced multiple times, who were you most recently divorced from? That would go right here. Or if you are currently married, that would go right here as well. Now it's going to be in the format of last comma, first middle. So it might be Doe comma Jane, let's be silly, heir. Okay, and her date of birth is going to be in the same format as this with the two backslashes. Um, so it'll be 0442003. And then you put in your backslashes like that. Okay, place of birth. Again, this is going to be city and state if in the US, or it's going to be city and country if it was not in the US. So you would put that right here in your spouse's place of birth. Okay, are they a US citizen? Yes, they are, or no, they are not. Okay, let's just um, say they are. And when did you get married? You need the exact date, okay? And you need that in the same format as before. So 06, 07, uh, 2022. Okay. Now, have you ever been widowed or divorced? This is where you'll indicate that. Uh, maybe you have not been, so a small black X. If you were, uh, your divorce date or your widow date, again, with the same format as before with the two backslashes. Okay, now you have an additional contact number here. This is for you. This is your additional contact number, and they want it in 10 digits, five, five, five. Okay, just like that. And then you can indicate if it's homework or cell phone, We'll say that's a cell phone. Maybe it was some other type of phone you could put right there. I don't know what other type of phone it would be, but you could write right there. What is your job? Are you a writer, perhaps? If you are, then you will just write it right there. Employer or school, say you are in school, you could write what school you're in, like say the university that you're attending or who your employer's name is, or perhaps you are self-employed even. Okay, so what is your height? Let's say you are five foot, 11 inches, you can write it in that format right there. Let's say your hair color is brown. Your eye color might be blue. There you go. You might not have any travel plans. You could totally skip this, but if you're trying to expedite the process, which is something you'll hear about in my other video and getting your passport as fast as possible, well then yes, you'll wanna put down your departure dates, what your plans are, where you're going, uh, your when you're coming back, things like that. And that will help expedite the process for you so they know that you have specific plans to do something. So in number 19 here, they're asking for your permanent address. And this is only going to be listed if you had a PO box in your mailing address or if your residence is different from your mailing address. So they don't want any kind of PO boxes here. They don't want anything like that. They only want a different address here if you put a PO box in your initial address, so maybe up here you put a PO box, and they only want something here if you live somewhere other than where you get your mail. So if one of those apply to you, then make sure you enter in the street right here. They also want, you know, maybe there's an apartment number, you would have to put that in here at the end as well. Oh, sorry, no, that would go right here. That apartment will go right there. Uh, the city will be down here, state in two digits, so that might be Massachusetts, zip code five digits. And here's going to be your emergency contact. So provide the information of a person not traveling with you to be contacted in the event of an emergency. So maybe this is a spouse who's not traveling with you. Maybe it's one of your parents, maybe it's a sibling, something like that. So make sure you give their name. It's going to be in the same format as before. So here, make sure you give their name, but it doesn't have to be in the same format as before. 
For example, I could write Jessica Smith, and that's going to be totally fine. What is her address? You would write it here um, as plainly as you can. Apartment is going to be over here. Don't make the mistake of putting the apartment there, because if you ever do make a mistake, for example, say I put, oh, my apartment here instead of there, well, I can't just like scribble it out. As it says at the top of the application up here, it says, if you make an error, complete a new form. Do not correct it. So you can't correct errors on here. You just need to get a new form. And again, you can download these online and I will leave a link in the description to where you can get these to make it easy for you if you do make a mistake. Back to filling out your emergency contact, make sure you include the city, the state in the two digit code. So again, maybe Massachusetts, five digit code for the zip code. So one, 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 one. A uh, 10 digit code for the phone number in this one right here with the double dashes, five, 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 five. That's a lot of fives. Okay, and the relationship to you. So it is a friend, is it a sibling, etc. You would just write that. So say this is a friend. So have you ever applied or been issued a US passport book or card? If not, just hit that X right there on the no. If you have, make sure you go right there, but then you're going to need to include some more data from your previous passport. So your name as printed on the most recent passport book. So this one's for book, and this one down here is for card, if you've had either of them. Make sure you include, uh, again, here as well, and here as well, your card. These are gonna be your numbers from them, and these are going to be the issue dates right there. Passport books and passport cards. And don't write anything down here. This is going to be for the issuing office. Again, I'll link to all those videos up here, and I will also link to them down in the description box for you if you need any further help. Don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments, and I will reply to you as fast as I can.